For stifle arthroscopy, we want to identify the patella, the tibial tuberosity, the patella tendon between those structures, and the femoral and tibial condyles. The ports are created at the middle of the joint, slightly abaxial to the patella tendon on either side. First, the stifle is distended with saline. In a medium-sized dog, approximately 10 cc's can be accommodated within the stifle. Stab incision is made into the joint and the cannula and obturator are placed into the medial compartment. The alternate home base is in the patellofemoral joint under the patella. Uh, my preferred method is the medial compartment. The obturator is removed and the arthroscope is placed within the cannula. Fluid flow is commenced and we are now able to start our explore. When you start in the medial compartment, the first image will likely be of the medial joint capsule, in which case you have to back out slightly. Now we can establish our instrument port. This should be quite wide because in this technique, a separate egress channel is not being used. And so fluid will egress out of this instrument port in order to have a look at the medial meniscus, we're going to lever the joint into valgus, and you can see here's a neutral position, valgus, neutral, valgus, and you can see how we can manipulate the joint and open up that medial compartment just by altering the position of the leg. So at the top of the screen, we have the femoral condyle. This is the mid-body caudal horn of the meniscus, and at the bottom of the screen, we see the tibial condyle. Moving axially, we get a glimpse of the quarter meniscotibial ligament until we drop in to the intercondylar notch where the cranial and the caudal cruciate ligaments can be seen. We'll continue to drift our scope laterally where we will fall into the lateral compartment. And here we can see the femoral condyle at the top of the screen, the intact lateral meniscus and as we rotate the post around we can get a better look at the axial regions of the lateral compartment and the tibial condyle. We'll reposition our light post to the medial position so we're looking laterally and if we telescope our arthroscope in slightly further caudally here we have the popliteal tendon hugging the caudal aspect of the lateral meniscus. Telescoping out now into the field of view, we have the long digital extensor tendon. Now by dropping the camera, angling the scope up, it is possible to telescope into the lateral stifle pouch. Continuing up proximally, the arthroscope can be lifted into the patellofemoral joint and at the bottom of the screen we have the trochlear groove and at the top of the screen we see the articular surface of the patella. As we raise our hand we are now starting to look down to the joint line of the stifle until we finally fall back on to the intercondylar notch. Similarly, we can position our arthroscope into the medial pouch of the stifle by angling the scope up with a hand down. So to the right of the screen, we have the medial ridge of the trochlea and to the left, we have the joint capsule. Raising the hand, I'm gonna drop the arthroscope back into the medial stifle compartment. Feeling these structures with a probe is very important. Here we are probing the cranial cruciate ligament and in doing so, more thoroughly evaluating the cruciate for pathology. To simulate a cranial cruciate ligament tear, we're going to transect and actually remove most of the cranial cruciate ligament. This can be done in a number of ways. Here we're doing it with an arthroscopic punch device. Coming mid-body, and it will take several bites as well as possible shaving 
in order to work our way through this fairly large structure. A final punch is being shown here and complete transection is observed. Probing should be performed to confirm complete transection and the stumps of the cranial cruciate ligament are shaved down with an aggressive shaver. Being careful not to injure the caudal cruciate ligament and the caudal meniscofemoral ligament as seen here. Stifle arthroscopy in dogs is mainly used to assess the meniscus. Triangulating a probe into the medial compartment can be quite tricky. Here we can see that the probe and the arthroscope are really almost parallel to each other. We have the stifle fairly extended and levered into valgus. We need to interrogate both the tibial and femoral surfaces of the meniscus. I'm trying to see if we can place the tip of this probe into a tear we might not be able to see. We also want to try to hook the caudal horn of the meniscus, pull towards us and note any excessive mobility. For the lateral side we have the stifle in slight flexion and varus. Triangulation and manipulation of the meniscus is a little easier in the lateral compartment because it's more mobile and distracts more readily. So again, we're palpating both surfaces of the menisci, trying to see if we can plunge into a tear. For a caudal meniscotibial release, the scope is looking at the axial portion of the medial compartment with the light post in the up position, so we're looking down onto the meniscotibial ligament. A probe is placed under the meniscotibial ligament in order to get a sense of the width of the meniscotibial ligament as well as the trajectory of the cutting device. In this example, an arthroscopic hook knife will be used, carefully placing it under the ligament, turning the handle so the tip is pointing up and firm but controlled traction is applied. The meniscal release site is carefully probed to ensure a complete release, which is confirmed by caudal displacement of the caudal horn of the medial meniscus.